Hello kids, Patrick Livingston of EasyAnimalsToDraw.com and today we're going to be drawing this animal. The pug. The pug's motto is the Latin phrase multum in parvo, a lot and a little. So let's start our drawing of the pug by drawing in the circle for the shoulders and chest which is the largest of the three circles, just dotting it in until I'm happy enough that it's circular in shape after having drawn in the four, four defining marks to show the height and the width of the circle. And now I can draw it in a little bit more firmly. It's not critical that it's a perfect circle, it's far more important that the circle is the right size and in the right place. You can use a compass or any object, coin, a lid, in order to draw your circles if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. Second circle is a little smaller, it touches the first circle. The second circle is going to define the hips of our pug. Believe it or not, pug is one of the oldest breeds of dog in the world, going back 2,000 years where it was bred for the emperors of ancient China. That's where the pug began its life. The Chinese had a preference for flat-faced dogs like the Pekingese, the Shih Tzu and the pug. It was in the 1500s that the pug first entered Europe, brought back by the Dutch. Now we're drawing the circle for the head, which overlaps the circle for the chest and shoulders. It's going to define the, the head of our pug. I'm going to further subdivide this circle, which will act as a guide to the placement of the eyes and the nose and muzzle. Of course, Pug doesn't really have an awful lot in the way of a muzzle with its flat face. My guess is that the, the Chinese emperors wanted the, like the flat face because it looked more human. Now the triangles as guides for the ears, placement of the ears. And as always, if you feel that you've made a mistake, never hesitate to rub it out and redo it. Now I'm joining up the circles. To create the overall proportions of the body. And now a guide for the the curly tail of the pug. And there you can see the overall shape of the pug's body. Now, four lines for the four legs of the pug. For our drawing guide. The rear, the rear legs, one suggestion about the name of the pug, it comes from the Latin word pugnus, meaning fist, the idea being that the dog's face, face resembles a a clenched fist. So now you can see that we are using the, the line bisecting the circle for the head to draw in the eye, pupil and a small circle of light to show that the eyeball is wet and reflective. And pug's eyes are 
large in relation to the, to the head, quite expressive. Now the nose. And the mouth. And the muscle. The breed makes an ideal house dog. Dogs are happy in the city or the country. Now we're drawing in the ears, using the triangles as a guide. Always keep your rubber handy if you need to rub or about a drawing, part of the drawing that you're not happy with. Better to do it at the beginning than at the end. I'm using a putty rubber. It's quite soft. It doesn't damage the paper. You can get them in art shops. On the hind legs. The hind leg nearest to us. And the claws. The paws and the claws. Pugs do best in a moderate climate. They don't like too hot or too cold. Want a little bit of information. They became the, the mascot of Holland's Royal House of Orange. And when King William and Mary of Orange arrived in England to assume the throne. They brought their pugs with them. And so that's how they were introduced into England. Now the four legs. You can see that the pug has quite a solid body in relation to the legs. Quite a large, stocky body. I was wondering when I'd noticed that, that I'd made the one side of the muzzle a little bit lopsided so now for the tail rather unusual tail oh it's so curly not many dogs have a tail like that some sleigh dogs i suppose have tails that curl Soon be time for my favourite part. Here we go. Removing the structure of the scaffolding, the drawing guide, to reveal the, the pure dog, the pure pug. Now 
and as always it's inevitable that we're going to there's no way around removing some of the the drawing that we want to keep it's just part of life when you're removing the drawing guide but it always leaves a trace and it's easy enough to go back and draw it in a little bit more heavily draw it back in Legend holds that the pug became the mascot of Holland's royal house of Orange when a pug saved the life of the Prince of Orange by barking to warn the Prince of an attack on his camp by Spanish troops. In the past, there were quite a lot of wars between Spain and Holland. At one point, Holland was a Spanish colony. There we go. That's our drawing done. And now time to do the shading, starting with the nose. Bugs come in three colors, silver or apricot fawn, with a black face mask, or all black. Uh, some details of the, the way the muzzle joins the face in a squashed up fist like fashion. And they have what would appear to be eyebrow like, an eyebrow, an eyebrow like structure around the eyes. You can see how, how the shapes around the eyes make the eyes look larger and more expressive. Just the thing for a Chinese emperor. As always, when you want to give the impression of fur, little short jagged strokes do the trick. large round head of the pug and the big sparkling eyes and the wrinkled brow give the pugs a range of human-like expressions that have, that have delighted owners for centuries. They can express surprise and happiness and curiosity. And I suppose that's what made them made them ideal dogs for Chinese emperors. I expect sometimes it was difficult for Chinese emperors to, to trust the people around them. Perhaps they felt that the, sometimes the only thing they could trust was their trusty pug. More detail on the muzzle. All of these details will be softened. In a second or two, There's some pale grey shading. Here we go. And for this kind of shading, as always, hold the 
Hold your pencil in a very light grip, very soft grip. And you notice I don't hesitate to move my wrist into another position each time that I want to make marks. You'll get the hang of that. That'll come with practice. Because there's generally an ideal position to hold your hand in relation to the kind of marks you're making, the direction of the marks. Become more obvious with practice. And drawing is all about practice. Everyone can become good at drawing if they practice enough. When I was a kid, I used to do a lot of practice, practicing of drawing. I, I really enjoyed nature and I really wanted to to recreate it in, in drawings and paintings. And I was lucky because my, my parents were very supportive. Now indicating those folds of fat, fat skin, And the shading on the tail. The coat is a very pale colour, so we're just indicating a little bit the, the folds of skin and a little bit of the muscle, the muscles and the foreleg. But unlike some dogs that are decorative, that started out life as working dogs, like the Poodle, for example, very decorative dog, but uh, started out, out life as a water dog, as a hunting dog in Germany. Well, I expect that the, the, the pug, pug was always going to be a dog that was bred just for human companionship. As always, you can find uh, PDF files with the drawing guide for the pug over at easyanimalstodraw.com slash pug. Just Google it, and there's lots of other animals and videos there on the website for you to have fun with. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and smash the bell to get notifications of, of more videos of up and coming videos. Some more final details on the nose and a little more refining of the area around the eyes. And touch around the ears and we must be getting. We're nearly finished our pug now. I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, happy drawing!